In the last video lecture, we saw that, it becomes easy to analyze monohybrid cross and its results if, we represent alleles with symbols. We have discussed the conventions of these symbols used in genetics. We have also covered Mendel's first law, or the law of segregation. According to this law, alleles separate during gamete formation. And during fertilization, these gametes can combine randomly in all possible combinations. Today, we will learn about Punnett square. Punnett square is a simple way to predict the outcome of a genetic cross. This method was proposed by British geneticist Reginald Punnett. Punnett square is basically a diagram that consists of boxes inside a square. Let's understand steps involved in the construction of a Punnett square. Suppose we want to predict the outcome of the given cross. As you can see here, the male and female parent of this cross are both tall plants. Each has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So, in the first step, we will write down the gametes produced by each parent. Now, draw a square. Inside this square, we have to draw columns and rows. Now the question here is, how many columns and how many rows? The number of columns is equal to, the number of gametes produced by the male parent. And, the number of rows is equal to, the number of gametes produced by the female parent. So, we will have, two columns and two rows. Now, write down the gametes produced by male plant, at the top of the square, like this. One male gamete at the top of one column. Next, write down the gametes produced by the female plant, along the leftmost side of the square, like this. Once this is done, the possible combination of the gametes during fertilization, will be written in the boxes inside this square. Let's learn. How to work out these possible gamete combinations? Just select one box inside the square. For example, upper left box. We have to write two allele in this box. One from the male parent and one from the female parent. These two allele are obtained by writing the allele at the top of the box and the allele at the leftmost side of the box. So, for this box, the combination of allele will be, two copies of dominant allele. That is, capital T and capital T. Now, come to upper right box. Here, one allele will be capital T. And, other will be small t. In the lower left box, one allele will be small t and other will be capital T. Remember that, when dominant and recessive allele are present together, we always write dominant allele first. In the lower right box, both the allele will be recessive allele. That is, small t and small t. So, these are the four possible combinations of allele in this cross. Let us determine the trait that will be expressed by the progeny having these combinations of allele. Recall that the tall allele is dominant over the dwarf allele. When two tall allele are present together, the plant will be tall. When one tall and one dwarf allele are present together, the plant will be tall again. This is because the dominant tall allele masks the effect of the recessive dwarf allele. But, when two recessive dwarf allele are present together, the plant will be dwarf. This is because, now there is no tall allele to mask the effect of the dwarf allele. Thus, in this cross, there will be three tall plants for every one dwarf plant. That's all in today's video lecture. In the next video lecture, we will learn the essential genetic vocabulary. Thank you for watching.